What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Run With Jay channel. So today we're going to be doing a recap of the 2022 Berlin Marathon that I completed a few weeks ago. So this video is intended for runners that are thinking of doing Berlin but not sure of what to expect. So hopefully this video will give you some ideas as well as some tips and hints on you know my experience to hopefully better prepare you guys for your run at Berlin. So if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. Please hit that like and subscribe button as well as the bell for the notifications and to all the returning subscribers thank you so much for your contributions and support so let's get this video started So for those of you that are not familiar with the Berlin Marathon, it's part of the six Abbott World Marathon majors, and it's a very popular race and usually happens in the fall at the end of September, around the third week. Um, and it's a uh, cost of it to attend or the participation fee is about 163 euros currently. So converted to about dollars, it's about the same at about like 160, uh, 60 to 65. Um, but that is just the participation fee. So when you do sign up for the race, they give you options to add a bunch of add-ons, you know, for like timing chip, if you want the jacket, the finisher tee, um, and, you know, all sorts of other things um, that you can pick up at the expo. So, um, you know, at the end, my total cost for the race probably totaled to about 250 around or plus around that price range once you add everything in there. Um, and if you are looking to purchase a like a, a jacket or a finisher tee or a participation shirt, I would recommend purchasing it during um, your initial um, sign up because at the expo it could get really crazy and you know you don't want to be uh, trying to look for your size and it'd be sold out. So if you sh are sure that you want to get a souvenir or uh, something from the race, I would you know highly recommend getting it during sign when you sign up for the race. So the race is obviously held in Berlin, Germany, in Europe. And for those that have never been to Europe, you know, it, it could be a little bit intimidating um, going to a different country, not knowing the language. Um, but being a person that speaks just English, you know, I did not have any issues with traveling or moving around in Berlin. Uh, pretty much the signs all had uh, English, you know, uh, translation in them. And in all of the places that I went to and the people that I talked to that were from there, all spoke pretty good English so it made my you know experience there very comfortable and it was you know very easy to kind of integrate myself into the country and everybody that I interacted with from the you know restaurant servers to the race organizers to just people that lived there were very nice and very helpful um, everything in the country you know from what I experienced is very efficient from the trains to just you know transportation to when things start and just to you know everything all uh, service related uh, which was eye-opening experience so the, my, <laughs> there was never a train that was late uh, that I expected um, to when I expected to arrive so um, the country was just you know very it's a very good country in my opinion it's run very well everything is just so efficient and uh, you know the, uh, the food the people were just you know amazing and I you know had a really good experience there and I'll definitely go back um, to visit Berlin and you know other parts of Germany and another thing is if you're worried about if they accept credit cards or debit cards there yes they do in almost 99% of the places that I went to, they took um, credit cards, uh, Visa, uh, MasterCard, not so much American Express in my opinion. So if you do have, you know, the popular Visa or MasterCard, you will be fine there. Um, any, you know, popular big store, uh, small kiosk or whatever that you want to buy food or, you know, souvenirs or anything from, they all take credit cards. But, you know, I would just have some small amount of cash converted to euros uh, just in case. Um, for that purpose, but you know if you're worried about you know the currency and everything just bring your credit card and debit card and you should be fine Just make sure that your credit card doesn't have you know uh, extra fee for using it overseas uh, But other than that you will be good <laughs> in Berlin and moving around the city is pretty easy as well You could take uber which is widely available um, in Berlin just like here in the US 
um, or you can take all different sorts of transportation from the trolleys to the S-Bahn or the U-Bahn or like their subways, uh, which is pretty, you know, easy to navigate in my opinion. Basically, the train will tell you what the last stop is and that's how you know which direction you're going. Um, and if you have a smartphone, which pretty much everyone does these days, you know, you can Google map um, wherever you want to go and by train and it'll tell you exactly which train to go. So just keep in mind, you know, the popular subway lines are the U and the S and each of those lines do have a different number for, you know, each of those uh, lines. So instead of having like, you know, a, a, B, C, D, E, F train, they would have like a S2, S3, 4, 5, S, you know, A, same thing with the U. So uh, just uh, not be confused that you can just hop on any of the U trains. They do go different directions uh, depending on the number of that specific train. And one thing that was nice is uh, my hotel and the actual race, SEC events, provided uh, all of the runners with a uh, pretty much unlimited ticket that they could use uh, throughout their duration of this day, I believe until the Monday after the race, where they could use that ticket to go on any public, public transportation uh, without a cost, which is very convenient uh, for people that are visiting from overseas. So just keep that in mind. A lot of the hotels in the one I stayed in, in the Central Berlin Station Hotel, provided um, us with a uh, pretty much city ticket that we can use for all public transportations. Um, but the race itself gave all the runners uh, that are traveling uh, that ticket as well, which is very convenient. So keep that in mind in case you're worried about a ticket or purchasing tickets and the costs and all of that. So on to the expo. Um, so the expo is very different in my opinion. It's located in a old airport in Berlin in like an airplane hangar, uh, which is very, uh, which is cool. Um, you know, it was a huge space, uh, had tons of people. And you know, when you go in, you feel like you're going to uh, like an airport, like you're going somewhere to fly somewhere, which is really cool. You get to see some of the abandoned, like uh, old uh, airport uh, gates uh, with all those the flights and stuff on there. It was just a really cool experience. Uh, when you go in, you know, the runners and the visitors will be separated. Uh, because you know the runners will get their um, wrist uh, bracelets uh, that they would have to wear until the uh, end of the race and also when you go in to pick up your actual bib and your you know uh, reserved like clothing that you purchased uh, pre uh, or you pre-ordered they'll be separated as well so usually um, they'll, the adidas section or the stand will be at the last section of the expo and that will have the most people in it because that's also where you pick up your bib and your pre-ordered uh, shirts or jackets so like i said before if you did pre-order them i expect the line to be super long especially in the mornings of the first or second day um, I arrive on the second day of the expo in the morning and the line to pick up my pre-order clothing was about an hour and a half. <laughs> it was looped all over the last section of the expo and um, picking up the bib was pretty easy. There wasn't really a line for that. You basically just show them your downloaded uh, QR code that they would email you a weeks before the race and you uh, show them a form of ID and they give your bib to you uh, pretty quickly. Um, also, in, while you're signing up for the race, you do have an option to choose a poncho or have a drop-off bag. So you can have both, unfortunately. Um, I chose to get the poncho because I, you know, I wanted it as a souvenir. And I wasn't planning on bringing anything to, uh, to the race anyway. So uh, if you get a poncho, you know, it's, it's a pretty nice poncho. It's not one of your, like, paper-thin ponchos. It's pretty warm. It's got a nice metallic sheen to it. Um, and it closes with Velcro in the front, but it's nothing like the New York City Marathon one, if that's what you're um, expecting. So uh, if you don't need a poncho and you want to do a bag drop, um, you make sure you check that bag drop option and they will provide that to you when you get your bib. And in Berlin, um, for the race, you are required to wear a uh, timing chip on your shoe. Um, so they will provide that to you as well. Um, you'll have to return it after the race, but I think some people uh, forgot to return it. Um, I don't know if they'll charge you for it, but I think they do charge you uh, for it when you sign up for the race. So other than that, I would you know suggest not coming in right in the beginning of the expo or maybe later during the day, so where the crowds uh, you know are less. 
um, to pick up your things. But other than that, um, there's a lot of, you know, your usual uh, kiosks there for massages, photos, uh, and all types of, you know, all of the running brands are pretty much there. So if you want to pick up some last minute items or running gear, um, you can always pick it up there. Uh, you also get to see the really cool, you know, uh, BMW cars uh, that are, you know, the cars that uh, the lead runners uh, pretty much will follow. Um, you get to even sit in them and play around, which is pretty cool. So it's a definitely a cool experience in the expo. I really did enjoy it. <laughs> so next we'll go into logistics like hotels and flights. Uh, flights are pretty self-explanatory. Um, you want to, you know, make sure you check the prices and get the best deal. Um, I booked mine about four or five months out, and uh, ever since then the price went up. So I'm glad I booked it when it was relatively low. Um, so make sure you keep your eye on that. And for hotels, you know, um, there's really you could pretty much stay in any Airbnb or hotel around the central Berlin, and there will be a, some sort of public transportation or train. Um, that would be able to take you to the start of the race or at the end of the race. Um, I stayed at the central station in Berlin, which is the biggest train station in Europe. So it was super convenient for me um, to just walk to the starting line, which is about a 15, 20 minute walk. And also the end, the finish was around the same area. So walking back was a breeze. And my family was able to see me like a couple times in around mild. I, two or three and also at the end by the Brandenburg gate which is very convenient so um, if you're looking to book a hotel around that area I would suggest booking it as soon as possible and figuring out your dates uh, where you were going to stay or if you're going to visit other parts of Europe or other parts of Germany I would try to get that figured out as soon as possible because um, I got a pretty good rate um, when I booked it about six months uh, pre beforehand but when I checked maybe two or three months uh, before the race, the rates were just insane. Um, so I would highly suggest getting your lodging and hotels figured out. Um, you don't necessarily have to stay exactly next to the starting line. Pretty much anywhere next to a train station is good because the train it runs very efficiently and it's super fast. Um, and you know um, when you finish the race you'll see people literally scattered all over Berlin uh, with their medals and their, their ponchos so uh, you don't have to literally uh, you know, stay in central Berlin so anywhere uh, is fine as long as you have an easy way to commute to the start line. So next onto the race itself. Um, so unlike a lot of marathons that people are used to the race doesn't start at like 7 in the morning. Um, the race actually starts uh, the first wave at about 9.15 when I uh, ran it a couple weeks ago. Um, the, the actual wheelchair and the people start earlier than that, around like uh, close to 9. Um, so you get actually you don't have to wake up super early at like 4 or 5 in the morning as opposed to other marathons that a lot of people are used to. So that's a good thing. Um, I woke up probably around 7, ate some breakfast. Um, you know, I was able to get to the starting line an hour before I ate without any issues. Um, so you, know, you don't have to worry about getting up super early, which is nice. Uh, so that's a cool thing about the marathon. So fortunately enough, I was able to experience Elliot Kipchoge breaking his own world record again in the marathon with a 201 time. So that was an exciting uh, event and I was I'm glad to be able to be part of that uh, in history. So my race went, you know, I guess okay in my opinion. Um, I didn't get my personal best that I was looking for. Um, you know, it could have been to a lot of the things that I will mention in, you know, takeaways later on in this video. But, you know, it was around, the temperature was good. Uh, it was around 40, you know, 50 degrees um, in the start. And, uh, you know, I just for some reason didn't have the energy, uh, you know, in the beginning of the race. And you know, after the 5K, I kind of knew that today wasn't going to be my day. But, you know what, that's okay. You know, as a runner, you're used to, you know, having bad days and good days. And you can't, you know, PB or PR in every race you run. So I will take it and chalk it up. I'm still happy to have completed it at a 326. Um, but my goal was to finally reach a sub three or be close to sub three this time around. But 
we'll have to try again maybe next time or in Tokyo. So we'll chalk this up as a lessons learned and continue to move on and move forward with training. Uh, marathon itself, uh, navigating to the star line wasn't an issue. There's uh, people everywhere telling you where to go and uh, you know you just have to funnel into your starting block which is like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Um, so the starting group, I believe A, B, C, D starts at 9.15 and then so forth every about maybe half or 20 minutes. Um, and the last group, I believe, starts at 10.30. And um, so uh, they do uh, break apart in like four different waves. So if you're worried about pacing or finding your pace team, um, so I would uh, make sure you look at the uh, pace charts and the timing group beforehand. So the race had a good amount of spectators and fans uh, watching you while you're running. However, in my opinion, uh, they weren't as you know loud and crazy as some of the other world majors that I've done, like New York City or Chicago. Um, there were parts that were super loud and you know really you know kind of fueled me to keep on going. But a lot of the parts, people were kind of just like spectating and watching and really only cheering for the people that they're waiting to see. Uh, so that was you know kind of interesting. Also, the water during the race, the cups, you know, aren't that easy to kind of squeeze and sip while you run. So that was a little bit of a letdown. Um, there were parts uh, when I stopped and I almost choked on my water because it was so hard to consume. Because it was plastic cups, but there were those really thick and hard plastic cups. And it's hard to kind of squeeze and drink. Um, there were only water was available in the beginning of the race, and then there were some um, stops where they did have more than uh, uh, like a more than water, uh, you know, hydration water, and you know later parts of the race. But other than that, just expect to have uh, plain water. So the race is pretty flat as advertised. Um, you know, there are parts of the race where there's tiny bridges that you'll have to cross that does have some elevation. But other than that, expect a really flat course. And there are some parts of the race that you could get, you know, start daydreaming and get a little bit bored because it's so flat. But, you know, then you'll reach parts of the race where, you know, there are a lot of bands playing music, a lot of spectators that will kind of get you back in the zone, so, which was nice. Um, the, you know, the anticipation at the end of reaching the Brandenburg Gate was, you know, uh, it was, you know, exciting. You know, I, there was a lot of you know, left turns, you know, at the end of the race. And then you're wondering where is the gate? <laughs> and then you finally reach it and it's like a glorious feeling, um, you know, when you finally get there and cross the gate and finish. Uh, it's a great, uh, you know, experience. So some takeaways uh, that I would have if I were to do this all over again is probably do less walking. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people who are visiting Berlin for the first time want to see all the tourist attractions and things like that. But I would caution with walking too much prior to the race uh, or maybe, you know, arrive a couple of days earlier. Um, so you, you can visit the attractions maybe after the marathon. So I didn't do that. I try to see as much as I can before the race and I believe that it did hinder my performance a little bit and as well as my energy um, during race time. So caution with walking too much, um, you know, as with any uh, marathon. Another thing is if you're coming from overseas, most likely the time zone will be different. So your body will have to get acclimated to the new time zone. So I would suggest arriving maybe a few days early just to get your body used to the new time zone. So you're ready uh, for race day. So a lot of people do have some jet lag uh, when coming in. So that uh, could hinder your marathon performance as well. So uh, that's something I would recommend. Another thing that I recommend is prepare everything beforehand like your hotel and lodging as early as possible not only because the prices will increase but you know it's just a lot harder to find last minute accommodations um, especially with an international race like this if you're coming from overseas things will get expensive things will get sold out and you know it'll be a very difficult for you so plan all of this uh, way ahead of time just so that's something else you don't have to worry about and, and lastly I want to say is try not to go overboard with your food prior to the marathon you know for people that have very strict diets or you know there you've had uh, you know there's specific foods that you eat before the race try not to deviate from that until maybe after the marathon you know I know there's a lot of delicious food there like you know currywurst schnitzel and that of course beer and you know other the delicious things there which I really enjoyed um, but you know try to you know go all out or go crazy with food maybe after the race um, where you don't have to worry about running a marathon so I unfortunately ate a lot of stuff before the race and you know I 
could have, you know, hindered my performance. Um, I ran overall at 326, which isn't my personal best in a marathon, but, you know, I'm, I'm happy to have finished it. Uh, but, you know, I believe that a lot of the things that I've mentioned here could have hindered my performance um, that, you know, that I wish I could have changed again if I was going to do the Berlin Marathon in the future. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down below in the comment section if you guys have any other comments or feedback or questions. You know, I'm, a, I'm wishing everybody that's running any other marathons in the fall uh, good luck. Uh, I know London was just uh, done uh, last week and Chicago as of making this video is happening tomorrow and New York City is happening in November. So good luck to everybody running those majors and hope your training is going well. So I uh, wish everybody the best. I hope you're all staying safe and I'll talk to you guys on the next run.